Hey, everybody. Uh, just imagine that I have a really professional and awesome slideshow, and, um, and we'll be good. Um, I'm having some issues getting it brought up, so. Um, hi, everybody. It's really lovely to be here. It's pretty awesome to walk into OsmoCon and see so many friendly faces and, uh, yeah, just love it. So I want to give a talk about regenerative finance on osmosis and the relationship between regen network and osmosis and just do a little bit of basic education on what regenerative finance is, why we're stoked about it at regen network and what we're doing to make sure that osmosis is the home to regenerative finance liquidity right, and what the sort of interchain relationship, interoperability story is, et cetera. So um, I'm gonna walk through a couple of different pieces here. So first and foremost, I'm gonna give everybody a, a little bit of an overview of ReFi, what it is, why it's exciting, what the potential is. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the sort of the, the next steps that are taking place to bring carbon on chain to osmosis, where that's at, give everybody an update. You may remember there was some governance proposals and stuff in the forum, so I'm gonna give everybody an update about where that's all at. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the future, like what this is all going to look like moving forward, what some of the exciting opportunities are with interchain accounts and liquidity management and sort of the connection between osmosis as the home of interchain liquidity and region network as an origination system for these ecological assets, right? And, and why that's such a cool and dynamic partnership. Okay, so refi, what is it? Regenerative finance. So this is the concept that we can create financial instruments that represent real world regeneration. Carbon credits are just really scratching the surface, but carbon credits are an existing market which represents taking some positive action in the world. So I'm gonna take a step back, because a lot of people ask, well, aren't carbon credits just bullshit? Isn't this just greenwashing? What's the real value here? Why is this important? So I'll just sort of address that first and upfront. Okay, so carbon credits are interesting and important because they represent a movement, which is to include carbon emissions as a liability on corporate balance sheets. So it's, this is sort of uh, beyond the concept of just, you know, there's, there's different facets of this. Some of the facets are like, hey, companies want people to know that they're responsible because it's good for customer relationships. There's also, hey, there's compliance markets like Europe where you need to do carbon accounting and there's a cap and trade system and you're forced to participate that. But in the United States, there is a growing movement through mostly shareholder activism in which it's now kind of consensus that for publicly traded companies, it's your fiduciary responsibility as a corporate executive to include carbon emissions as a liability on your balance sheet and be working towards you know, balancing that liability. And thus, the birth of the voluntary carbon market. Right? So just to sort of say, this is a big industry, off-chain, there's a sort of off-chain market, there's just sort of adoption and demand. Uh, the carbon off-chain carbon market has been expanding uh, something like 30% per annum. So it's a thing, it's interesting, and why is it interesting to bring it on chain? It's interesting to bring it on chain because a bunch of the issues that the carbon markets have, like transparency, traceability, liquidity, and governance, are all things that we think a lot about <laughs> in the blockchain world, right? This is what a public blockchain was built for, right? It's one of these rare opportunities in which there's a real world use case and the technology we're so excited about is kind of perfect for it, right? So it's exciting. Um, there's also, I just want to mention, there's sort of a world beyond carbon as well, but because the first uh, liquidity and market mechanisms that we're focused on at Regen and, and the things that are be, gonna be coming to osmosis soon are going to be these voluntary carbon assets. You know, I just sort of wanted to land that ship around why it's valuable and why it's interesting probably for, you know, many of you may be traders, um, probably some of you are participating and going long. Carbon is a pretty interesting asset class, right? Because it is 
um, not arbitrary. There's sort of like an existing institutional adoption around it. There's a it's constrained supply right now, which is interesting. It also represents doing good things, which is kind of nice to be able to go long on something that has like public benefit. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> well, um, so those are all attributes that make me believe that carbon is a really interesting digital asset to mix into a portfolio as well, right? So just, you know, and that's one of the reasons why it's getting so much traction in the larger Web3 space. And, you know, our job at Regen is to make sure that the IBC economy is a welcoming home for on-chain carbon, right? And osmosis is the logical place for liquidity to be building. Right? So that's why we want to make it possible for you know, yield farming for carbon assets to be taking place to build liquidity, right? And then to, to make sure that that commodity, on-chain carbon, has a deep enough liquidity to be able to start to be useful for things like collateralizing inter or other potential stable coins, right? This is really exciting. Right, to be able to start to have a non, because carbon has an off-chain market, it's not correlated with crypto markets, to have an on-chain digital asset that is going to be increasing in value over time due to other supply and demand dynamics integrated into our financial you know, ecosystem, our DeFi ecosystem, is really, really important right, for the stability and health of the whole ecosystem. Okay, so, so regenerative finance, um, has really started to explode. I think it was about a year and a half ago that I first put hashtag refi in my Twitter bio. And then since then, a bunch of big things have happened. And you can look at, you can sort of like say there's a world before Klima and a world after Klima. <laughs> who, who, who here is familiar with Klima now? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, they were in, you know, Wall Street Journal, and it's a famous, you know, I think Klima was trading for like $4,500 briefly, and now it's trading for like $3, so. Um, <laughs> but it got a lot of attention, and it got a lot of attention around bringing carbon on chain, essentially. And that's why I say there's a world before and after, because now there's this, this explosion of interest. Right? And meanwhile, Region Network, we're sort of working hard on the set of really uh, challenging issues in order to get to this vision which I was painting, which is one of deep enough on-chain liquidity for a high enough of a high enough quality asset that it could be considered collateral. Right? That's from a DeFi perspective, that's the holy grail. Right? But what are the conditions that need to exist for that to take place? Well, we need, to have, we need to understand that it's a high integrity asset. It's a commodity, right? So it needs to also have utility and it needs to be usable. So that's why we've started with, for instance, you know, shout out, offsetting osmosis, offsetting stargaze. We're gonna be offsetting the hub. We're gonna be offsetting Evmos. We're gonna be offsetting region. And soon we're gonna be automating offsetting. And soon we're going to be automating transactions. So you have this on-chain commodity. It's useful when it's used, right? When companies are coming and buying and retiring it. When blockchains are offsetting their emissions. When Bitcoin miners are creating green offset Bitcoin. Hold, hold on to your seats once we start working with Axelar and creating green wrapped Bitcoin that originates on regen and goes to osmosis for liquidity, things are gonna get really fun, right? So that's the utility. That's where like these carbon assets, which are creating regeneration in the real world and are an on-chain commodity, are being used in the ecosystem, right? So that's fundamental to go along with building liquidity. You know, you don't wanna just be building liquidity because it's just abstract and nothing. There needs to be sort of like the circular economy of use, again, because it's a commodity not just an, an arbitrary asset or, you know. So, um, okay, so refi, utility, carbon is a commodity. We've already been taking steps to start offsetting carbon and sort of showing those, that demand. The other piece, how many people here are familiar with uh, when I talk about, a, uh, I think it was um, prop, 
uh, well, I don't even remember now, is it maybe Prop 64 in osmosis around offsetting osmosis um, carbon? A few people? Anybody vote in that? Cool. Um, so we did a series of, uh, we did a really uh, amazing job and props to the community support, DAO, osmos osmosis community support DAO. They're freaking amazing. We did a process with them to create a, a governance, a set of governance proposals. One of them was offsetting, right? Because I'm talking about sort of like, you have the circular economy for this commodity. And one of the things that it's used for is offsetting, right? So that you can say our blockchain is carbon neutral. And why is that important? And sorry, this is like a slightly non-linear talk, but why is it important for the blockchain industry to be taking responsibility for carbon emissions? Regulatory, well, exactly. So folks, we're in a competition of different monetary systems. You know, the theory here is that we can create more public goods with less negative externalities. That's like the basic value proposition of the entire Web3 space, is that we can create transparent, community-owned, financial infrastructure that's fair and, and results in the building of wealth that's distributed and has positive externalities with less negative externalities. So if we're forever fighting this story of, you know, the, like the carbon boogeyman, it's just gonna be hard to continue to build adoption, especially Gen Z is really tuned in to the fact that there's a climate crisis, right? So it's really important that there is sort of like this circular economy flywheel in which we're sort of accounting for carbon emissions, baking it into our operational costs. And the nice thing is that also creates, as I said, the opportunity of an on-chain asset class that is not correlated with the rest of the crypto industry. Right? That's amazing. And that has a, a strong, like there's a strong bullish signals even in today's economy around the carbon economy, right? So it's a really strong asset to be bringing on chain. Okay, so I think it's easy to understand. Osmosis' role in this is to build, to, to host liquidity, right? And to serve as a dynamic experimentation venue for new financialization experimentation. What's Regen's role in all of this? And why do we want, you know, and, and why is this a beautiful interchain story, right? Classic so interaction between sovereign zones. Regions' purpose is the origination of high quality ecological assets, including carbon, right? We're a natively Web3 carbon registry. We're a system for digital monitoring, reporting, verification, and credit issuance. So we're like the production, you know, if you think of wheat as a commodity, region is like the wheat farmers, and osmosis is like the Chicago <laughs> Commodities Exchange, right? So there's a symbiotic relationship here in the best of worlds in which we do our job well, which is to develop, to, to go out and farm that wheat. You know, we want to develop the supply of carbon, and in osmosis, you know, we want to develop the liquidity and demand for that in different ways, right? So this is the symbiotic relationship that then, as we build it out, results in the ability to have a high quality collateral class to, to like anchor the building Cosmo Phi ecosystem. Okay, how am I doing for time, by the way? Five more minutes? Okay. So, The f let's talk about um, nature carbon ton and practical, sort of like grounding this in practicality. So um, we made a promise to the osmosis community to bring the nature carbon ton to osmosis. And we have been postponing that in order to build a bridge between regen and polygon because Polygon is currently the largest liquidity source of this specific carbon ton standard 
that we worked hand in hand with Toucan to develop the standard. And then they did this whole process to get a bunch of carbon on chain. And we realized, you know, originally we wanted to really quickly accelerate getting carbon, you know, into the AMM, getting on osmosis and yield farm. And then we started to realize that, you know, the, First off, they were very reluctant to have a one-way bridge. <laughs> it was just sucking liquidity <laughs> out of their ecosystem and into our ecosystem. Secondarily, there's a big arbitrage opportunity, right? So if you have osmosis yield farming getting turned on, and people are like, oh, I can turn my carbon into a yield firm, a, a, you know, yield-earning asset. This is exciting. Boom. You know, there's an arbitrage opportunity between chains, and we really wanted that to be a community arbitrage opportunity, not like insiders who can manage command line interface and like get things from here to there. So we basically slowed everything down. We're like, okay, we need to build the bridge, make that all clear, make the user interfaces. And it turns out that bridges take a long time. Has anybody ever, there's, a, there's been a few bridge exploits, you know, okay. So, current um, status on getting NCT onto Osmosis that's unified, right, where people can mint it on Regen and we can pull from Polygon and we can have like a multi-chain unified carbon market, right, in which Osmosis can start, you know, mining liquidity, right, for us to start to build towards that vision of this as a high enough quality asset to then, you know, be, be folded in as collateral in the future. Um, you know, we're looking at turning that on probably in late July, right? So we're cranking away, partnering with Toucan, things are going well. Version one of the bridge will get turned on then, and then we'll be working with Axelar to basically build a, a much more multi-chain deployment of that and sort of like transition. It's, it's exciting. That'll probably happen much later, right? Because there's a lot of work happening, lots of assets, and lots of traffic in that. So that's the NCT update. So look forward, hopefully, you know, knock on wood, and no promises, look forward to late July, we'll actually start, the, it will be possible to be actually participating in governance to decide if we as a community want to be bringing, you know, li turning liquidity farming on, yield farming on for um, NCT, like getting high quality carbon liquidity and starting to build it up into the Cosmos ecosystem. Very exciting. Um, meanwhile, at Regen Network in July, we're gonna be launching our marketplace for eco credits. So you'll be able to go and you'll be able to buy natively produced eco credits, basket them, and move them over to Osmosis. Um, we'll be able to start talking about governance of what sort of like basket criteria, what are the standards for this, for the fungible commodity versus the non-fungible commodity. And, you know, if I had another hour, we would d start digging deeply into this whole process between non-fungible and fungibility related to, um, you know, eco-credits, essentially, these ecological assets. Because each one is completely unique, right? And we make these decisions to sort of like sort and standardize them to be able to build liquidity and to have the benefits of markets, but then there are some downsides. So there's a whole sort of like responsible fungification process. That responsible fungification process, again, this is one of the things that Regen Network does. Right? So by the time it hits on osmosis, the government's decisions and the functional process of fungification has happened on region. Right? And so for those of you who are interested in that and want to participate in that from a governance perspective, region network is a great place to come and engage, right? To participate in, in those conversations, to participate in ensuring the quality, right? So again, region network, we have a system that is designed to be originating ecological assets, right, with a community of scientists, with a community of project developers, with a community of engineers that are dedicated to that, data science, verification, asset origination, and standardization of the fungification process. I don't even know if that's a word. Uh, then we are shipping it out to osmosis, where we build liquidity, where we can start to be thinking about the financialization of these assets, sort of putting the DeFi back into refi.
So that's the whirlwind overview of sort of the interchain relationship between region network and osmosis, the coming launch of carbon onto osmosis, hopefully as a yield earning asset. There's lots of governance between here and there. And again, a little bit of a glimpse into what we're about to be shipping at region network, which is sort of this full featured marketplace credit origination system. Region network 4.0 is coming. If you're a token holder, go vote. Uh, well, actually you can't vote yet. Go into Commonwealth and read what's happening. We're still testing the beta, which as everybody's probably aware now, testing good. Uh, so thanks, everybody. It's lovely to be here. Um, go osmosis. And um, yeah, it's fun to be here. Thank you.